Hello, people. I'm Javi Koei. Joining us is Achara Kirk. Hello. We're going to look at Honest Trailers, Star Trek The Next Generation. Just so you guys know, I grew up watching Star Trek. I watched the one with Captain Kirk. Yes. And I watched The Next Generation with Picard. Yes. I watched a little bit of Janeway, and then I fell off the bandwagon for a while. And I kept watching the movies that were coming out with Next Generation Kirk. I'm very excited to watch well, this. Well, yeah. Oh. And my last name's Kirk, so obviously. Oh, so you just shoot, Daddy Kirk shoot was right just in. like, you got to watch all the Star Treks now. If you guys want to watch a really awesome video, check out Red Letter Media's Star Trek review on, I think it's Star Trek Generations or something. Just check out anything by Red Letter Media regarding Star Trek. They have an interesting commentary on the films. Anyway, let's check this out. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Now Netflix is included. Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network. Oh, I like that That's look. cute. Very old school look. Before Star Trek Discovery forces you to boldly subscribe where no one has subscribed before. <laughs> Celebrate the 30th anniversary Yay. of the Star Trek spinoff that gave rise to the ultimate nerd question: Kirk or Picard? Engage. Star Trek: The Next Generation. Your dad loved the original <laughs> Star Trek's mix of campy aliens, cheesy dialogue, and razzy caliber acting. I'm now, get ready for the original series Geeky Younger Brother, featuring new aliens, yeah. more complex stories, and acting that's way better than Star Trek deserves in this kinder, gentler sequel, where crew members discuss their feelings, celebrate each other's cultures, oh. and fight with their words, not their fists. I hereby formally request third-party arbitration of our dispute. You have the right. Furthermore, pursuant to subsection... Oh man, being civilized is boring. <laughs> Warp into the 24th century with an all-new USS Enterprise, an awkward hybrid of cutting-edge space battleship, and a Marriott Convention Center. Members of the Archaeology Council, I want to tell you about my detective story. And meet an all-new crew, Counselor Troy, an empath who can always tell when someone's lying, except when she can't. What do you think? It's hard to tell. <laughs> I sense nothing. What is it? I don't know. Something. Jordy LaForge, a blind engineer who's here to say tech words. A cosmic string emanates a characteristic set of subspace frequencies as atomic particles decay along its event horizon. Worf, a warrior who never learns out of Klingon fun facts. Klingons do not laugh. Klingons do not surrender. Klingons do not procrastinate. Klingons do not allow themselves to be probed. Lieutenant Commander Data, Data an android who drops being an android into conversations, like your friend who just became a vegan. Why do you have yellow eyes? I am an android. You're not human. I'm an android. You sound like you don't want to be an android. I am an android. I'm an android. Will Riker, the horniest first officer in the fleet, who's never met a woman, hologram, co-worker, amnesia-stricken crew member, <laughs> or genderless androgynous alien, he didn't want a bone. Commander, tell me about your sexual organs. Dr. Crusher, who's just kind of there most of the time. Her son, Wesley, whose genius is matched only by his skill at irritating people. Yep. I know this may finish me as an acting ensign. Shut up, Wesley. I don't think this is my style. Shut up, kid. May I point out that <laughs> shut up, Wesley? Everybody needs somebody. Enough! And Captain Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> Make it so. The most British Frenchman in the galaxy. Tea, Earl Grey, hot, excellent tea. Good day. Watch world-class actor Patrick Stewart remain fully committed to his dialogue, even when the writers clearly fell asleep on their keyboards. Ah, klaxon, you remember the Romulans, Klingons, and Vulcans from the original series. Now, get ready for all new species, with all new ways to glue prosthetics to people's faces. Like, the best Star Trek villains yep. ever, the Borg. Yeah. 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 The Ferengi, literal buttheads in serious need of a dental plan. <laughs> Q, an omnipotent trickster with a serious man crush on Captain Picard. Warning, darling. And the Kardashians, <laughs> omnipresent leather-skinned tyrants bent on galactic domination. Wait, what? Oh, sorry, what's that? <laughs> oh, sorry. And the Kardashians, 
Omnipresent <laughs> spin tyrants bent on galactic domination. Eh, not sure which one I prefer. Journey to a sci-fi utopia oh, where yeah. poverty, racism, and That's war where are things got of the past. Sent us to and death. forget the original Star Trek's miniskirt boys club. Now she does a good job, all right. It's just that I can't get used to having a woman on the bridge. Because on this enterprise, the future is woke. Klingons <laughs> appreciate strong women. We no longer enslave animals for food purposes. I have decided to allow my child to choose its own sex and appearance. At least most of the time. Okay, well at least things are better, right? I mean, the ladies aren't all stereotypical anymore. I never met a chocolate I didn't like. Damn it, Troy! So relive one of the greatest pieces of science fiction ever created, full of unforgettable moments, and a few that they wish you would forget, like the time the gang met Mark Twain. Shame on you, Mr. Clemens, shame. The one where Captain Picard turns into a kid. I need to see him now! Now, 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 now! And the episode where Dr. Crusher inherits a lamp that contains a space ghost. Dinner like that candle. Why not? It'll bring the ghost. Who she porks until it reanimates her grandmother's corpse and attacks her friends. Beverly, it's all right. You're not Nana. Nana's dead. Uh, are we sure this is as good as we remember? <laughs> Story. Wow. Original series cameos. Data interrupted. <laughs> what Klingons do to their children. Data, I am not talking about parenting. He betrayed the colonists and would have betrayed the Enterprise as well had I not. Shh. The unhatched eggs of a large scaleless. Later, Data. Death fake outs. Jordy's dead. We're dead, Jordy. We are not dead. You're dead. He's dead. You killed him. No. Doppelgangers. Picard meme faces. That one lightning effect. <laughs> Red alert. Palm punches. I never even realized how often that was used. Acting! No! You've just committed an act of utter barbarity! Of an actor. The Picard maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> the Riker maneuver. Dr. Pulaski's being shown to her quarters. You may want to start with something like this. You don't look like a person who came here to relax. Something's wrong? Counselor Troy's ill. Okay, Morda. <laughs> concerts. Lots and lots of concerts. Seriously, so many concerts. <laughs> and Worf getting his ass kicked. <laughs> Star Jesus, Trek, I didn't even realize class. how many times. Yeah. Though. But seriously, go back and watch the episode where Dr. Crusher bones a space ghost. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Oh, well, man. I had no idea I could feel this one. We're nearly merged now. That totally isn't how I remembered it. No, not, no. I, well, to be honest with you, it's one of those things that was such a huge part of my childhood, and yet, like, I can't remember a single episode properly. It's all, like, fragments and stuff, but just remembering the characters and right. spending so much time watching it. There was one episode in particular that I remembered that they kind of went through uh -huh. for just a brief moment where it just left a strong impression in my mind because it was this perfect paradise of a place. Everything was immaculate and, and just you know, it's the symmetry of the design and everything ever, there was no crime. And then what happened was Wesley was trying to catch a ball and he fell into a garden. His friends he was playing with started to freak out just because he fell into the garden. What happened was his friends were trying to assume blame for it, but the guy, but the guards saw what happened and they're like, okay, we have to kill you now. Because it was what? just like the law was that strict. Wow. If you do anything wrong, the punishment is death. And that's how they keep order there. And there was this like whole affair with trying to get Wesley out of there and appealing for his 
life. It was an interesting episode, just seeing this kind of, these extreme laws in this other world where everybody was human. What they didn't show in their collection of things that happen a lot in Star Trek is hallway walking scenes than talking. Oh like, yeah. Like that was in every single episode. There was always these long strands of dialogue happening. Yeah. In a, in, you know, while, while they walk through the hallway, they didn't show that once here. I'm like, oh, that's an obvious one that they kind of looked over. But the other things were, I suppose, things that you wouldn't consider that happened a lot that were interesting. Yeah. Like how many times Worf went down. I'm like, oh wow, like. I had no idea. Because in my mind, I perceived him as such a tough dude that you yeah, wouldn't yeah. want to mess with. And here he is by Diana Troy, or Diana, I forgot how you say her name. She she knocks him down with like a little Hapkido yeah, twist. Ha. I don't even remember that. The Borg taking him down, I can understand. The Borg's the yeah, Borg. Like, the Borg you can't, you can't. Serious. The Borg was my favorite nemesis in the, in the show. That's what made Star Trek First Contact so cool, was the Borg were the bad guy in that movie. Bad guys in that bad, movie. Bad guys? Yeah. yeah. What, the only thing disappointing about Star Trek First Contact is that Data was barely used in the movie. He was stuck with the Borg throughout most of the film. And I thought that was crap. Because but... Data rocks, I'm sorry, I love him. And then they killed him. Well, he comes back to life, doesn't he? They killed him in the one with Bane. There was a Star Trek with Tom Hardy where he played the young Captain Picard and that one I remember Data got killed and then like they brought him back at the end as some other version of Data, it was weird. You really don't realize how hokey things are until you, you, you know, a montage like this is pulled together. I remember really enjoying the series finale of Star Trek. It was insane, the production value that they brought to the final episode. It was a, I thought it was really well done. It was really exciting to watch, but a lot a lot of these kind of hokey moments are completely absent from my memory. The lightning effect that they showed is pretty much the same lightning effect in every every time that you see it. They were talking about how many concerts you see throughout the show, and I think that has in part to do with Star Trek is an hour long series. Right. And they had to fill the time somehow, and so they just breathe as much life into this ship as possible. Like <laughs> all the possibilities of things that could happen. Everything. You know, like concerts. Like what do you do on the holodeck when you're bored? You go and become Sherlock Holmes as Data. I remember there was one episode where Data and Geordi were doing the Sherlock Holmes thing on the holodeck and within the first 30 seconds, Data called out the bad guy who was pretending to be good. And he's like, no, you've got the thing right here. And Geordi just walked off the holodeck. He's like, you fucked it up. You, you're, you're revealing everything too soon. That's not how this works. Like <laughs> Geordi was always trying to walk Data through how things are supposed to work. Yeah. It was interesting. So. I think that's why I like Data so much because he was just so awkward. Well, he's just innocent. Yeah, because you know? he doesn't know, he's just an android. They make it look so bad. <laughs> But the thing is, like, of course, it, you know, us watching it as kids, it's gonna have a certain, like, gleam no, to it. Because, no, that's not a good enough know? excuse. There was a lot of adults who really enjoyed the show, who still look at it fondly. Like, but they must it's, have known. Yeah. They must have known that it was campy. I didn't know it was campy when I was a kid. That's the thing. Just yeah, like, it was just, you know. It was just great. Yeah, it's just awesome. What's interesting is Captain Picard, like, uh, or, um,. Patrick Stewart, he always looks the same. It's been like 30 years, he yeah. always looks the same. He's always been an old man. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was born. He was just like Benjamin he was born, Button. Yeah, he was born a bald old guy. And he just like isn't getting any younger. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, Jordy was the host of Reading Rainbow. Oh, you didn't watch that, you're not from the States. Reading Rainbow was a thing here in the States that was like fun for kids. I forget what channel it was on, but... Oh, uh, I think he, I've heard of this. He was the host of Reading Rainbow. Oh. It was a fun kids show if you were a kid. But Achara was never a kid. I, I, so. I was born this way. Just like Captain Picard. You guys, yeah. thanks so much for hanging out with us. Please comment below. Let us know your favorite Star Trek The Next Generation episode. Check out Achara Kirk on the social media. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out other reactions, reviews, and short films. I'm Jabby Kowei. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out. <laughs>